Welcome everybody to Bar and Restaurant Breakthroughs Podcast. Today we're going to talk about branding secrets for bars and restaurants that make you stand out from the competition uh, with Henry Kamansky. Uh, Henry's got a, a design company, design firm in the New York area. Um, and Henry, what we met probably, what was it, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago in one of our uh, marketing groups. And uh, uh, Henry kind of just reached out and says, hey man, I, I do branding. I do a lot of design work for bars and restaurants. I looked at some of his stuff. I was blown away um, and actually hired him to do stuff for uh, for Casey's and Rural on Tap. So, Henry, I know I gave you a quick little intro there, but if you want to add anything else kind of to you know, your, your background. Sure. Well, Nick, first and foremost, thanks again, buddy, for having me on the podcast. Uh, you do amazing, amazing things with your brand and you are a tremendous uh, inspiration. And uh, I remember Thank it's it's been about two weeks, up two weeks, two years, two and a half years at this point that we've known each other. And I've just seen you grow exponentially over those years and uh, want to give you a big shout out for that. So um, real quick, you know, like you said, I, I've been in the design and branding business for 10 years now. Uh, I've worked with hundreds of restaurant owners. Um along along the way and really found out what works and what doesn't work when it comes to branding identity for your restaurant and um, i worked with a lot of higher end i've worked with a lot of uh, franchises and one of the biggest things that i see as a disconnect when restaurants go into the, the 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 identity part of their branding is the extreme inconsistency mm -hmm. um, that 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 they struggle with, and it's having one advertisement look one way, and then another week or two they come out with another advertisement, and it looks one hundred percent one eighty. Yeah, <laughs> if that makes any sense, you know, from the previous ad, where it almost looks like it's two different restaurants. Yeah, yeah, no, I I agree with you, and and I, I want to get into to more detail with that before before we go on. I guess why don't we answer the big question of you know what is branding because I I know there's especially with me too. I wasn't really big into branding, uh, you know, years ago, and I didn't really know what branding was. I heard what branding is, but I mean, what is it? What does branding mean? If you want to brand your restaurant, what does it mean? What is it going to do for you? What are the benefits of branding for your bar or your restaurant? Awesome question. And I get it every time somebody gets on the phone with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a desired perception, Nick. It's how you want your your audience to view you. And when I when I really break it down to a third grade level, we all want friends in life, right? Right. And basically what we want is how would that friend speak of you? How would you want that friend to speak of you if they were introducing you to another person? That's what branding is all about. Right, right. No, that that that's great. And how exactly do you do that? You know, with with a bar or a restaurant. I know there's branding. You look at like McDonald's, all these big companies. They got <clears throat> millions and millions of dollars to go throw their logo all over the place, and you know they can do that. I'm always about you know direct response marketing. I know you are too. When you spend money, you want to be able to track and measure your results. McDonald's, Burger King, Hooters, whatever. They go out, they put out this commercial. They don't know exactly how much came in from that unless it's tied to an offer. You know, and 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 you can't really see that, but you could. Still still do branding with direct response marketing, but kind of, how do you, how, how do you do that within, within your marketing, uh, you know, with exactly kind of what, what you just talked about, you know, because so, for, the, for the small yeah. bar restaurant owner, we can't afford to just go, here's our logo. We're branding, we're branding ourselves. We can't afford that. We need results. We need That's money it. in our pocket. That's it. So the first thing that I tell my, 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 my clients is you got to know your audience. You got to know the people that are walking in your front door. And you, you really got to know what makes Johnny that sits at the corner side of the bar every Thursday. You got to know what makes him tick. And when you get personable with your audience through your branding, that's what separates you from your competition. So you have two bars, Nick. You have a great pulse 
on the community with those two locations and you have your local you have your local customers don't you right right so it's understanding them and then creating a consistent message that goes out to your community and talks about some of the things that makes these folks tick that's really going to connect with your target so how do you do that consistent marketing message and consistent brand identity that's how you do it yeah and, and one of the ways that that i do it best in the way that i you know kind of kind of explain this to all my clients and, and my audience is i think one of the best ways with branding is just by number one starting with lead generation um of getting people to hand over their information for some type of offer getting them to say hey i want to do business with you here's my information please send me that i want to come in and do business with you but the follow-up and like you're saying, the consistent marketing messages of getting that to them. A lot of bar restaurant owners can't keep affording to spend money on radio, TV, mass media and getting that marketing message out there. But they can spend money to generate these leads, get people who are interested and even have the disposable income to go to bars and restaurants. But then that consistent follow up message of communicating with them where I think that's, you know, branding as well, because I think sometimes people feel branding is maybe just the image the design but i think it's also like we're talking about the the communication the messages that we're sending to to our audience which is perfect through email or even through facebook posts that are just targeting those, those specific people um what, what what would you say about that i i think that there's a there's three parts of branding that everybody should understand there's the brand identity brand identity the brand messaging and the brand experience. So when they walk through that door, what is the experience that they're going to have? And then during that experience, how are you making them feel? And then what are they gonna say about you after they leave your establishment? So identity, messaging, and experience must all be consistent in order for you to have a successful brand. And so it's 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 powerful stuff. It's powerful stuff, and that's why these these bigger these bigger brands are are are, are dominating because they've mastered it. Now I want to take this a step further for a second and ask you this. So now that you've established that, now what happens? And the biggest thing that I want to address is a lot of the bigger brands nowadays are coming down into the personal level and they're becoming very personable with um, um, their audience. Look at um, the big pizza chain that is um, Papa John's, right? Yeah. That guy's on every single commercial. He's the face now of Papa John's. Yeah. And he's done a tremendous job on connecting that per his personality yeah. to his audience. And that's what I encourage all of my restaurant clients um, to do is everybody loves to, 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 to chum it up with the owner. I, I agree. I agree. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I always tell people, people want to do business with people who they like and trust. And one thing I always try to focus on, especially when it comes to the lead generation side of things, is I want when I'm communicating with my audience, I want them to feel like they know me on a personal level even if they've never met me before. And so just like you said with the guy from Papa John's, I would, do you know his name? I can't think of his name. Is it John? <laughs> Let's just call him Papa John. You know, but, the, you know, he's interacting, he's talking, and people kind of feel like they know him uh, just because of his, his commercials. And I think that's really, really important. I think you're right that a lot of uh, companies are doing that. Um, and, and one of the best ways, just like you said, he's on all these commercials. Video is getting to be huge. Um, what are some video branding strategies? And I know I, I've worked with so many different clients before where they just hate technology, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's some things that we like, there's some things we don't like. Um, but there's very simple ways to create video these days um, where staff members, managers, you know, can kind of do that stuff. But what are some some unique video branding <laughs> strategies that just about any bar or restaurant owner could do with their, their iPhone? You know, it's not like you got to yeah. have this big video crew come in and do a $10,000 commercial, but kind of what have you seen? What ideas do you have for some video branding strategies that kind of makes 
you stand out from the competition and makes people want to do business with you versus the competition. Well, ev- everybody, all of us, all of us have this weird thing inside of us about voyeurism. We love to be that fly on the wall to our favorite celebrities and secretly follow them around and be behind the scenes. And I have found in my business and a lot of my clients' businesses, when I tell them to shoot some behind the scenes video on some of the things that you guys are working on, some of the some of the the the, the team efforts that you guys do. Maybe you guys do um, some charitable stuff, right? And maybe you guys. Um, uh, sponsor softball teams or so on and so forth, right? So people love to see that behind the scenes action. So that's one actionable video strategy that I would recommend you do um, because people- what about, what about like making a certain new menu item in the kitchen or something like that? So that's kind of like a behind the scenes in the kitchen, yeah. cooking it, starting to kind of from scratch and hey, here's what's on special this week or something like that. It, exactly. Or you come up with an, or, Joey that comes in every Tuesday uh, recommended something, right? And now you implemented that and created a a promo item from it, right? Maybe you call it Joey's special, right? Now what did you do? You included a audience member, which is going to increase your engagement. It's going to increase your likability. It's going to bring in that personal touch, right? right? And then the second part is, hey, this is how we've created that. So guys, and, and literally you're doing this on, a, on, a, on an iPhone, um, and you're saying, hey guys, we just had this awesome, awesome recommendation by one of our customers, and we're actually gonna put that into action this week. So meet Joey. Joey was, and then you go into it. That's it. So it's a couple minutes long, right? And people are gonna, there's people are gonna connect with that video on so many different levels, yeah. right? And he, and you're and you're 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 kind of sneaking in the promo into the video, right? Right. So maybe the call to action at the end of the video would be like, hey, guys, this this promo is only going to be going on until this Thursday. So if you want to go, if you want to grab the Joey special, make sure you come in you know, between four and eight, you know, during happy hour or something like that, right? To grab it, right? And then there you go, there's your ad. And then you just, you just became intentional with that video, with that video piece of content. Right, no, I like that, I like that. Um, what else would you say, do you, do you have any other ideas for, for video? Um, I, I really wanted to pick your brain on video just because, I mean, that's becoming so popular and just so many people engaging with video and it's so cheap. I mean, Mm -hmm. YouTube and Facebook video ads, Instagram video ads are so, so inexpensive compared to TV and everything else that's out there. And people can visually see this stuff. Um, But what else would you say? I mean, just really just kind of maybe showing some of the food items, the drink items, some of the behind the scenes type stuff. I mean, would you say those are kind of probably the best things for for bars and restaurants to implement? Well, here's the thing. People buy experiences. They buy feelings. Right. That's what they buy. They're not buying that cheeseburger. They're not buying that beautiful filet mignon. They're buying that experience. They're buying that feeling that when they come into your establishment, something happens to them. Right. So with video, what I try to do, and this doesn't, this isn't necessarily just for restaurant owners. This is for any client. This is for any business. If you can showcase, like for example, we're working with, um, we're working with, a, let's put this in the context, right? So I'm working with a restaurant right now and helping them build their brand and their marketing. And I said, I would love to have you shoot. And this is where you you, 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 you may want to invest in a decent quality video with some, ed- with some editing. Yeah, so you, you, you hire a videographer and they, they create for you maybe a couple, uh, one minute to two minute um, edited videos and you're showing, you're showing great customer experience. You're showing people laughing. You're showing people enjoying their meal. You're showing people amongst their families, right? Right. 
people are going to say, that's, that's what I want. Yeah. That, and, and that's, that's the experience. That's the feeling that, that, that you're demonstrating. So I would invest the behind the scenes stuff, unedited, raw and cut stuff is fun, but I still think there's some video that must be professionally done that captures that feeling and spirit and an end experience that I'm talking about. Yeah. And what I've done before, just for people listening or watching this or even reading this on, on, uh, you know, my, my website, I've hired videographers to come out and just done it on trade, you know, two, three, four, five hundred bucks for certain video projects. So it only cost me maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty bucks in goods, you know, to get a nice video done. And then when you're putting it on Facebook, YouTube, it's it, it's it's pretty, uh, pretty inexpensive. Um, so, you know, I don't want people thinking they got to spend a ton, a ton of money because or, you know, it also depends on the area you're in. You know, when you're downtown New York, <laughs> you know, kind of where you're close by there, things are going to be a lot more expensive than uh, rural Arkansas, for example, you know. Right. So, so, right. Um, well, listen, bartering is a great idea. Yeah. You find you find somebody who's a videographer and he's one of your customers. You say, hey. Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, I wanted to touch on video, but I also want to touch in the design side of things for, you know, even social media, even newspaper. You've done some awesome, awesome work for me. And what I will do uh, under the video on our website um, is I will put a couple of those social media images on there that you've done for me. Like you did that dollar burger one, you did the taco ones. Those turned out great. What kind of what kind of tips can you give to people for, you know, designing a great looking ad? What, what are the things you don't want to do? And what are the things you really do want to do? Excellent question. So some some real elementary fundamental things that you should do with all of your advertising design is this. You want to pick a color scheme and stick with it. You want to pick a font selection and stick with it and make sure that every single one of your pieces of design has either your logo on it and or and or your website or some sort of call to action that says hey do this yeah and that that's the direct response that nick was talking about before that really separates you from the competition because you cannot expect your viewer of that ad to take action on it without you deliberately saying hey come on do this I've learned that the hard way over many, many years when I began, when I would do ads, you know, for my company where I just thought that, oh yeah, it's expected for them to pick up the phone and call me, or it's expected for them to visit the URL that's underneath my logo. If you don't have the word visit next to your logo, uh, your URL or your website domain name, you're leaving money on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Pe- people have it sounds like common sense, but people literally have to be handheld uh, to, to take that action. And I'll kind of just chime in a little bit on the on this, too. It's when it comes to the free social media stuff, I always tell my clients, like, hey, if you want to put something out free and just do, you know, a nice looking design and just say, hey, here's our specials. Great. But if you're spending money, yeah, there, you got to be able to track it and figure out if people are coming in for that. So there needs to be some type of call to action of you know, maybe show this post or click this link and they go to the web page in order to get this coupon, download it, enter in their information, whatever it may be, some some way to track it. But, um, you know, I, I just see so many bars and restaurants, exactly what I used to do, you know, just like I told you, nice picture of our food, here's our logo, like me on Facebook, you know, follow us on Twitter, this and that, our address and all that kind of stuff. But, and I was spending hundreds, if not, you know, a few, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month on that type of advertising, but not seeing any kind of results like that because so many other <clears throat> bars and restaurants advertise that way. It's here's our specials, here's our promotions. Um, but where I learned is more of a direct response way is we could still get great branding, we could still put all that out there, but have a call to action so you can track to see if this is working or not. Because if you're spending a thousand bucks on ads and people aren't coming in for it, don't keep running it. But some people just keep <laughs> running it because the law of business is you got to keep marketing, you got to keep marketing, it costs money to make money. But if you see something's not working, don't keep doing it over and over and over. Right. You, you, well, you, you know. What you want to do is do over and over and over what works. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but no, th- those are some great tips because, you know, I've found myself in the past, like talking about the whole design stuff, stick with a color scheme, stick with uh, uh, the, the, the fonts, you know, the right types of fonts. Like ever since you started doing stuff for me, I'm like, 
this is what our stuff has to look like. And I've had people reach out to me, who does your design work? Who does this? This looks great, you know? Um, and so now, you know, I always try to focus on using that font all the time and I'll put some of those images down below but I think that just again it makes you stand out and when everybody else is I see a lot of bars and restaurants in our area they'll they'll do Facebook and they'll go find an image off of Google you know and they'll just put that on there and I think that kind of hurts you because you know I, I think you need to be taking photos of either a exactly what you have there with you know a great looking uh, product or image in the fonts and all that kind of stuff or you know kind of like the design stuff you do where you buy these high quality stuff high quality fonts and you put a nice background and you can put those types of things together so you've done stuff for me before where it, the image wasn't something from the bar then you have done stuff where it is image from the bar but I think it all just falls in line with each other just from the you know the color schemes and the uh, uh uh the fonts that are used it's like you see the same thing and now when people see that they can say oh that's casey's or oh that's real on tap without even seeing our logo yeah you know and i just want to plant this seed with your audience as well you know when people see amateur and unprofessional designed ads subconsciously they think that you have poor quality uh, food and poor quality uh, customer service and a poor quality brand overall. But when they see that polished picture of that menu item and the consistency in the branding, everything looks, look at Houlihan's, look at TJ Friday's, look at those, th those, those bigger brands. They're all so consistent. And when you go there, the, the experience is consistent as well. The food's consistent as well. So you only get one shot to make a first impression. Yeah. And if you're, if you're going to start grabbing low resolution, poor imagery off of Google just to throw something up. You, you, like Nick said, you're hurting yourself. Yeah, and it's just like a website. Think about it. And I'm sure a lot of us could say the same thing. We've gone somewhere to a website to go buy something. It looks like it was done in the 80s or the early 90s. And we're like, oh, well, I'm going to go back to Google and find something else that looks more, you know, that, that looks newer, that looks more professional. Sure. Um, and that same type of thing comes to what you're putting out there on social media, uh, in the newspaper or whatever. Um, you know, and I've had the news, I've done a lot of newspaper ads and a lot of the times they've have wanted to like do their own designs and stuff for me. And I've let them and I look at it and I'm like, this looks bad. You know, they take some clip art and put an image of a clip art steak on there. And I'm like, this isn't what I'm looking for, you know? Yeah. So, but no, you, you made some great points. Um, and again, I just want to pick your, pick your brain on, on some video strategies and also print design type stuff, things for social media. What are the things you do want to be doing? What are the things you don't want to be doing? Um, because I think that'll really help our, our audience. Um, are, are, is there anything else that you want to add in? Where else can people get more information on you if they need some great design work um you know if people don't have a designer sometimes it's hard to find people they don't know who to trust they don't know you know maybe you can show them some examples or whatever it may be where 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 could they go sure so i'm heavily i'm heavily on uh instagram so if you go to unique underscore designs with a z you can catch me there and then you can also just come to my website at unique designs with a z at the end not an s dot net and uh, you'll see my story, you'll see what we actually do for our clients and um, how basically um, we help you get the results that you're looking for with your branding and your messaging. And uh, Nick, awesome, awesome job again on this on this podcast. I love what you're doing. I love the value that you're you're giving to your audience. And uh, thanks for designing the cover of the podcast. <laughs> you designed the cover of it. <laughs> I did, I did, I did. And uh, it's just a pleasure to work with you because you know you know what you want, and you're just looking to leverage that time. You know, I, one thing that I could empathize with for with all of of the bar and restaurant owners out there. Uh, is that time is very limited yes and there's only so much we can do yeah right and you, we become extremely overwhelmed when we try to take it on all ourselves and so when you find that right designer you find that right person that can help you you know take take your business take the things uh, that you want to take to the next level without you having to do it it's the biggest thing that grew my business 
Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Well, I appreciate it, Henry. I will leave links uh, to your websites, Instagram, all that stuff below. I'll even throw a couple images of, of the things you've done for me uh, besides the podcast cover. Uh, but, you know, some of the stuff you've done for, for Casey's and Rural uh, on the webpage as well. So I appreciate it, and uh, we'll be talking soon. Thanks a lot, brother. Talk to you soon.